Hello and welcome to Faith Matters, a series of programmes where we look at real life issues through the prism of faith and belief. My name is Keith Hitchman and I lead the River in the City initiative for the Anglican Diocese of Liverpool and I'm based here in Liverpool City Centre. For this programme I have two guests with me, Bill Addy, Anglican priest and chief executive of the Liverpool Business Improvement District and Chris Gibbeau, local business person and leader of the Northwest Christian Business Forum. Good evening, gentlemen. Firstly, can I begin by asking you both to say a little about your organisations and your role within them? Chris. Well, the Northwest Christian Business Forum was um, founded about five years ago. It's a gathering, really, of people who work in the marketplace right across the Northwest region, uh, who have faith and who believe that God is interested in what goes on in the marketplace. And actually, the Bible has a lot to say about how to do business in the marketplace. We meet on a regular basis. Our next meeting is tomorrow, tomorrow night, just before Christmas. And um, in various ways, people are really trying to see how their faith works in today's marketplace. Bill. Yes, Keith. Yeah. Say a little bit some, little yeah, something well, I'm, about... I'm chief uh, executive of the Liverpool Business Improvement District, the Liverpool Bid Company. So some of the viewers may have seen the signs around the place. The Bid Company, uh, what we do is we represent 1,300 businesses in the centre of Liverpool. So the heart of the commercial district and the retail district, um, City Central and the commercial district are the brands. Liverpool Bid Company is the overarching company. And our job is to provide enhancement, animation, additionality in the city centre. So we get involved in some exciting things like zip wires, Christmas time, we're going to talk a bit about that later, but also things like cleaning and safety and security. Okay, the Christmas season is already upon us, isn't it? It must be a busy time of year for both of you. Bill, how is the Liverpool Bid Group preparing for Christmas this year? Well, Christmas for us at the moment is, is, has been in the process since the beginning of the year because uh, the businesses that we represent uh, in the retail centre particularly, uh, a large element of their trade comes through during the Christmas period. Major retailers, the bulk of their trade comes in the Christmas period, so it's important that we get Christmas ready. And there's competition from across the North West and indeed nationally for people to come to Liverpool. So the bid company has been leading the way. And if anybody has been in Church Street recently, they will have seen the, the work that we've put on uh, the Marks and Spencer's building, which is the animation, the light projections. Hopefully they will have been following Jack Frost around the city. Jack Frost and his snowflake trail, which is the only free family entertainment this Christmas, especially commissioned pieces of art in various places around the city. And then also the Thursdays are live after five. So we've uh, already had the, the launch of the Christmas, the Christmas tree switch on, um, but last week we had our nativity processions and we've more to come each Thursday evening as we move towards Christmas. And all well attended so far? All been very well attended and all very safely attended in the city centre, so it's been tremendous. So that's what we've been doing, gearing up for Christmas. And how was Black Friday in Liverpool? Uh, well, for us, you know, uh, Black Friday is a sort of a marketing construct, I, I say. Um, but it, for us in the city of Liverpool, Liverpool uh, has very important weekends. One of those is always that final weekend in November because it's the time when people finally start to get in towards the holiday mode. It's when salaries are paid and people have that money that they're going to spend over Christmas and they start coming out into the Christmas shopping. So for us, Friday was good, it was safe and it was uh, footfall levels are on the increase in the city centre. Good, good. This year's church's Christmas promotional campaign has the uh, strap line, Christmas starts with Christ. Does it really, or is that just wishful thinking? What do you think about that, Chris? Well, we wish it did start with Christ. Uh, we all wish that. Um, but you mean Christians wish that? Yeah. Well, yes, anybody who goes to church, and Christians, obviously. But I think the reality is it's, it's, it's rather more like the American Thanksgiving now. I mean, Christmas has become an intensely family time, which is good. Um, 
people do go to church, which is also good. It may be the only time they do go in the year. So they're going to get some kind of message, which is an excellent thing, and it, it sows seeds. But the reality is, I think, that Christmas has become an intensely um, commercial time. And as Bill mentioned, um, with Black Friday and the kind of lengthening of the retail time, it concerns me from a business perspective that retail now in the United Kingdom is so dependent on a successful Christmas. Uh, if we didn't have a successful Christmas for any reason, or somehow suddenly Christmas didn't, just didn't happen, then an awful lot of our retail business would be in very serious trouble. And that's the sort of underlying bit that, that is of concern. Of course it's good when people meet together. Of course it's good when they come together in family. Uh, and it's great when they go to church, even if it's only once a year. But does Christmas now really begin with Christ? I'm afraid I have my doubts about that. And really, of course, Christmas was never Christ's birthday. The shepherds would have frozen in the fields if they'd really been out there in December. Uh, it was almost certainly in the autumn. And Christmas is based on a rather unpleasant Roman festival called Saturnalia. And these days, and I'm very happy that in Liverpool, Black Friday seems to have been really quite a reasonable occasion. Um, in certain other cities, there seems to have been you know, rather a lot of um, unseemly behaviour, appalling as the police have called it in various places. But it, it all does rather sort of remind us of where Christmas originally came from. The church grabbed a pagan festival off the Romans, Saturnalia, and sort of ran with that quite literally. And sometimes you think, oh, it's all catching up with us. Yeah, the Archbishop of, meanwhile, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, George Carey, has gone on record saying that Black Friday is the end of Christmas. Mm. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how, how true that is. Well, uh, I, hope, I hope it's not true, um, because there's a lot of good things about Christmas, but there is also intense pressure, intense marketing pressure now, by a retail sector that has to do well. It can't afford to fail. So that pressure is there, and I think we all feel it. And Bill, you're, you're a priest as well, but uh, you know, what do you think about this thing, about uh, the, the slogan, Christ, uh, Christmas starts with Christ? Uh, do you think that's true? Is that true in your context and environment? Well, well if, if you look at it grammatically, it's correct, isn't it? Because if you took Christ out of Christmas, it'd just be mass, wouldn't it? So uh, I must admit, as a priest, I, I think it's... I cringe sometimes when I see the shortening version of Xmas. Um, so it does begin with Christ, but actually that's, I mean, it is very important, isn't it, to remember that whatever, when it came on, who, who created it, it's an opportunity for us to bring Christ without an excuse into, into, the, into the city centre, but into people's lives as well. And it's a, from my point of view as a, as, a, as a priest, then I have opportunities in the church that I run in, in, in South Liverpool. Yeah, people come to me for weddings and baptisms and funerals, and we get good congregations. But it's the one time when you can actually talk about it a lot during the, during the working week. And it's, so it's, I think it's, very, it's an important thing. But, you know, I, th I think we get liberated as well that because as a church now we're moving into this period called post-Christendom. We're not a Christian country anymore. We, 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 we have Christian laws, but we're not a Christian country as such anymore. And so if we take the establishment out of it and actually bring back to the fact that the, at the nature of the whole of this is regardless of all the traditions that have been uh, arisen from it, at the heart of all of this is a living God coming to meet with us at a point in time when Christ was born. <clears throat> And that's what's significant for me as a priest. And, and so that's why I, I embrace Christmas from all of that. And I love all the traditions. Well, you, and Bill, you sound very hopeful. Are you as hopeful? Yes, because I'm just thinking about what Bill said there. I think that despite the fact that Christmas is such an intensely pressurised time, uh, and one of the things we know is that it can, for many families it can actually yeah. cause yeah. enormous pressures, Nevertheless, the, the counterpoint of the Christmas story of Jesus' birth and the circumstances of his birth um, are a reminder, a very important reminder, of a quite different approach to life. And I think that is important, as Bill says. So I'm not saying, oh, Christmas is nothing to do with Christ anymore, far from it. But I think that for too many of us, the pressures of Christmas... Um, and particularly the, the, the market pressures, tend to almost eradicate any sense of moving towards a sacred yeah. remembrance, uh, a, a spiritual time. 
which is a pity. But then on the other hand, you know, Bill puts something on on the street and it stops people. They hear a carol being sung. They see um, a camel or a donkey going through. And it does still remind people. And that's really important. We mustn't underestimate that. That's great. Uh, join us for part two. Welcome back to Faith Matters. With me today is Chris Gabo and Bill Addy. So we don't believe uh, that commercialism has killed Christmas. We, we're not with um, our former Archbishop George Carey in saying that Black Friday has killed off Christmas for good. No, I don't think it has, but it can be a close run thing. You know, a couple of days before Christmas, the turmoil, the pressure on the streets, you do wonder sometimes. The last, think, mi the last minute rush. The last <laughs> minute rush, absolutely. But no, Christmas is still a Christian festival. And in this country, we're still well aware of that, which is great. But I think it would be good if we could all pause and just take some time to remember that um, and not just be the constant pressure to be back in the shops. You yes, know, yes, yes. Christmas Eve, <laughs> maybe one day off. Look at the way we shop. We go to Tesco's and Asda and Sainsbury's and now Aldi and Lydon must mention them as though the country's going to shut down for a month. Actually, it's going to shut down for all yeah. of what, 24 well, hours? 24 though? hours, most, most businesses yeah. and most shops. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and then there's shopping online, isn't there? Yeah. And uh, how, how does that Well, you can still shop online on Christmas Day if you want to. Of That's course. where some of the sales start. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Is it, actually, it's an interesting concept because, I mean, a lot of people said that shopping online would close the high streets and, and kill the high streets. But now we have click and collect. So most major retailers have an online presence and they use the click and collect. So that's actually a way that people can order online at times when it's convenient, but then go into the store to click and collect. Well, I, so. I've, I'll, I'll, a confession for you, I've done that this week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, um, so have you sent Christmas cards or have you sent e uh, I will e be sending Christmas cards. It's a family tradition, actually, that my wife normally writes them all and then she says, tells me she's written them all and I occasionally get to look at one and write something in it. I think sending Christmas cards is a great opportunity for just saying, actually, you know, I mightn't have seen you for a year, but you're still a friend of mine, and um, I still think about you, even though we haven't been able to speak. Yeah. I know nowadays it's completely different with all the different forms of social media that we use. We have instant communications. I've got family across the world in Tasmania and various places, and I can speak in an instant. I can text in an instant. But it's still nice to get that Christmas card. So has commercialism killed Christmas? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, you look back at uh, Christmas Carol and uh, the, all the tales of Oliver Twist and Christmas time then, people were saying it was com too commercial. I think it's, we need to remember that there's a balance. And as Chris has just said, it's not about rushing into the shops and focusing on and, and having to do things and this constant treadmill. We need to be able to people to step back and take a breathing space and just to contemplate that this time of dark day, dark nights, mm. very short days, this winter period when we can actually bring some light into the world. That's why we try and do it with the, the Christmas trees and the illuminations. I think it's great to pe people to see their houses lit up with, with uh, Christmas lights. Um, and we must remember, don't we, as Christians, Christmas is about the light coming into the world. And so I yeah. believe that that's an opportunity that we have as Christians to actually s to embrace Christmas. And so I do in, in all the ways, and especially in our church, we have great Christmas traditions. We're actually talking about our crib service and having snow machines and donkeys, perhaps, in church. <laughs> and I think, I mean, the fact that churches, most churches that you will go into, will have the same cycle of services going that's on. Right, yeah. And it connects. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think it connects for people... Uh, we go to the cathedral, I have done ever since my son, I had one of my sons was a chorister there many years ago, so you get into that, I mean, there's no better place to go than the cathedral to, to have this incredible sort of uh, series of services that actually do explain yeah. the spiritual dimension. And I think as long as churches are open and welcoming, their doors are open, people can come in, and a lot of people do come in, yeah. don't they, Bill? Oh, they do. One and only time yeah. in, the, in the year. That's right. Then they are connecting with the spiritual. They are connecting with God. They are encountering God, which is really important. But at the same time, of course, if you can do some of that stuff on the street, in the streets mm -hmm. of Liverpool, yeah. that's also good because many, that's the only place. So we've got all these opportunities and we just have to sort of keep foot firmly yeah. in the door we to do, stop right. the commercialism side. And there's plenty of room in the cathedral. 
Just, yeah, to, just, for, just for our viewers. <laughs> there is, yeah, it's yeah, a there is cathedral. Yeah. Yeah. Well, both the cathedrals. Yeah. And our, our new bishop, Bishop Paul, of course, going back to the Christmas cards, yeah. he's, sent, he's encouraging everyone to send cards yeah, and, and, uh, and not e-cards. Yeah. And he, apparently he personally sent 600 cards Apparently this so year. he's going to be yeah. handwriting 600 um, cards. So. And I think that, that's, that, that is important because there's something about putting um, pen to paper, ink on paper, paper. Yeah. which it's almost like you know rediscovering books or something. You yeah. suddenly realise actually this is kind of real. That's right. One of the things I learned about this year was that people are beginning to rediscover real photography. You know, back to actual yeah, right. because there's something about back yeah. to the substantial in our hand, and yeah. I think that's a bit. We're, we're talking about that, aren't we? That's exactly right, and that's why it's important to do, have these traditions at Christmas to do that. So it's, it, I mean, but also Christmas is a great opportunity for us to showcase our city. Mm, so commercialism yeah. is important because it's important that we have shops that people shop in. It's important that we have hotels that people stay in, restaurants that people eat in because also that's providing employment. It's bringing revenue into our city that allows the city to, to breathe and to live. And that's why it's also important that we make the most of Christmas. Well, that, that brings me to uh, my next question, really, which is that you're both uh, business people in different kinds of ways and involved with, with the business community. Um, how do you, you know, in your personal lives, as well as your professional lives, how do you strike that balance between the demands of uh, being, being business people and, um, and also being representatives of the church? How do you do that, it, even in your prayer life, your devotional life? Well, I think the first thing to do is, is not to see there as being a difference. I'm a Christian, whether I'm in business or whether I'm in church or whether I'm in my family, whatever it is that I'm doing, it's 24-7. So and you're saying God, that there's no sacred-secular divide? No sacred-secular divide. I would say God is as interested in business as any other aspect of life. And what's more, when I read my Bible, I'm constantly seeing that most of the key characters in the Bible we're business people. They're in the marketplace. We're all in the marketplace. We're earning our living one way or another in the marketplace. Jesus did that. He was a businessman to the age of 30. He ran what was probably quite a substantial sized family business before he went on his ministry time. Uh, he, he knew all about uh, business, about the demands of the marketplace, about providing good service, good value, um, being well respected, all those things. He totally understood uh, business conditions, business life. Um, and the Bible, of course, from beginning to end, is very concerned to see that uh, people who are following God are prosperous because God wants uh, his people to, uh, to be prosperous, to create resources and meet the needs of others. So the Bible is as good a business handbook as any you will find. <laughs> Yeah, that's very yeah, true, isn't it? And of course, to follow on from that, the Bible also talks about a God that uh, loves justice, mercy, and wants mm -hmm. us to walk humbly with him. So, uh, and I believe that's what businesses should be. They should be just businesses. They should deal with people in a, in a merciful way. And uh, so for me, it's, it's uh, no difference. I've only been a priest for two and a half years now. I came to priesthood later in life, but uh, I'm... Sort of, I thought about this uh, for long before I, before I was ordained, and you know that point of ordination when you become a priest. So I'm not just a priest on a Sunday morning when I put a yeah. collar on and when I dress like a vicar. I'm actually a priest 24-7, so I'm a priest when I'm at home with the family. I'm a priest when I'm very much when I'm at work. I'm, I'm a priest when I watch my football team. Well, it's, it's interesting you, could, you say that because uh, um, I was speaking to Matt Bell who you introduced oh, yeah. me to the other yeah. day, and he very much said that about you, actually, oh, that, right. uh, okay. that well, you, you, you embody that in the city, which is... Well, it's, it's important. That if you're a Christian, uh, what a great opportunity for you as a Christian, because as Christians, we're called to go out into the world, aren't we? So, therefore, to be that bridge between the secular and, and the sacred, to be that bridge is, is a tremendous privilege and tremendous responsibility. And for me, even more so now, to have been given this role as chief executive of, of the Business Improvement District, I get to bring uh, my working life and my, my church life I I into one, really. So it's, it's, a tremendous it's a tremendous opportunity. I feel very privileged to have it. Yeah. That's great. So just um, a final question, maybe a light-hearted question, is um, what, what do you want for Christmas this year? Well, I normally always say to my family, buy me books, because I like to yeah. read books. And I think that's probably still the same answer, because, to be honest, you know, we don't lack for much, do we, these days? No, no. And something of the magic 
always for children, it's the magic of what will I get for Christmas, what will be under the tree, everything else. And obviously, as you get older, some of that stuff rather starts to go. So as always, books. Um, but I think, above all else, as many of my family as possible back at home. That's great. And yeah. quickly, uh, for me, just three points on Boxing Day will do me. <laughs> well, Chris, Bill, thank you very much for joining me today for Faith Matters. And thank you to our audience. Thanks for watching. And join us soon for the next episode of Faith Matters on Bay TV.